This episode of Harvey Brownstone Interviews is brought to you by the Harvey Brownstone Talk Show Blend Coffee, available at hollywoodblends.com. Everyone's saying it's the best coffee they've ever tasted. Why not give it a try and see for yourself? Hello, everyone. I'm Harvey Brownstone, and today's guest is an immensely popular singer who became a global sensation in 2006 when he won season five of American Idol, beating out Catherine McPhee, Chris Daughtry, and Kelly Pickler. Since then, he's gone on to make history. His first album with Arista Records went platinum. He's the first male American Idol winner to be featured on a Grammy-winning record, and he's the first American Idol winner to land a prestigious Las Vegas residency. And get this, he made the cover of People magazine when they named him the hottest bachelor of 2006. His energetic stage performances and unique blend of classic rock, soul, blues, country, and R&B have earned him a very large and enthusiastic following of devoted fans known all over the world as the Soul Patrol. His versatility as an entertainer has given him a multifaceted career, not only in music, but in theater, television, and movies. He starred on Broadway as the Teen Angel in Greece. He appeared as himself and performed his hit song, Porch Swing, in the 2021 movie, Stars Fell on Alabama. On television, he appeared on Law & Order SVU, and he hosted the popular show, Slate Plate, for three seasons, which won the Synopsis TV Award for Best Reality Series in the Travel category. He's currently on a North American tour called Night Moves, playing to sell out audiences, performing his hits, as well as many Bob Seger classics. And if all of that weren't enough, he's also a co-owner of Saw's Juke Joint in his hometown of Birmingham, Alabama. His restaurant was named one of the 25 best barbecue spots in America by Men's Journal. I'm delighted to welcome the super talented Taylor Hicks to our show. Taylor, thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Harvey. How are you? It's great to have you here. You know, because of American Idol, a lot of people thought you were an overnight success, but the truth is that you were performing and making albums for a long time before that show, right? Yeah, I, you know, it is a 10-year overnight success story, but, you know, to be able to have the platform that Idol, you know, allowed me to have, you know, I'm just blessed. Uh, you know, it, it was a it was a work in progress. And even when you 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 do break in the business, it's always a work in progress. You recorded two albums independently before Idol, right? I did, yeah. Yep. I've done a couple of independent records and you know, the, the, you know, the obviously the record with Clive and uh, yeah, it's, it's been it's been a long it was a long road, you know, to get but opportunity creates luck. That's so true. You were 16 when you bought your first harmonica for two dollars at a flea market. And I read that you taught yourself to play the electric guitar and the organ. Is that right? Yeah, I played all of the instruments are self-taught. You know, obviously, I've been singing for a long time. But yeah. You know, it was a it was a labor of love, and and the, you know, luckily the stars aligned. When you were at Auburn University, you studied business and journalism. When did you decide to pursue music? You know, when you start learning instruments and teaching instruments yourself, you know, it's it's just something that you just have to you just kind of know in your heart. You know, it's a vision, and luckily that vision you know materialized. Well, now on American Idol, you have the distinction of being one of the very few contestants who proved Simon Cowell wrong. At your audition, he said you would never make it to the finals. But after your performance on the first live show, he admitted that he was wrong. You should be so proud of that. Well, it's, you know, he doesn't say he's wrong a lot. But, uh, you know, yeah, we played the game well together. You know, he was uh, obviously a business, a music business guy. And you know, that's something that, that obviously he's had a lot of success in. So, you know, it's sometimes when you have music business minds, they're not necessarily on the art, on the artistic side, but more so on the business side. But there is a difference between music business and music. Oh, for sure. I really loved your song choices on Idol. You sang so many great songs, Taylor, including Taking It to the Streets, Crazy Little Thing Called Love, Jailhouse Rock. Try a Little Tenderness, and of course your gold record, Do I Make You Proud. 
Now, I know you've talked over the years a lot about that experience. I just want to ask you this. If you could make one big change to that show, American Idol, what would it be? Well, you know, I, I uh, you know, I would like to see a, a little bit more movement on stage. I think a lot of the, I think a lot of the contestants, you know, that play instruments kind of, they, they, they're not a lat, they're not lateral movements. But I, I like to see all the singers get out and dance a little, and uh, shake it up, you know. So I, I, I would say just having more, a little bit more lateral movement as opposed to just hiding behind your instruments. Would you ever want to be a judge on a TV singing competition? Yeah, I mean, look, I I personally believe that, you know, that if you've gone through the show and you've won it, I think that you just you have that accolade to be able to judge it. You know, I uh, I I believe that that the winners should should only judge the show outside of obviously obviously superstars that are extremely successful in the business. Well, last year, after taking quite a long break from the recording studio, you released your single Porch Swing, which I first heard you sing on the Kelly Clarkson show. Why were you away from the music business for so long? You know, I was doing a lot of of television and film work. Uh, I was doing State Plate. I was hosting that. I was doing shows. I was I was doing music and I was in the in, in entertainment. I was just doing different things and, and really didn't have. You know, I like to hitch my my art and my wagon to, you know, things that kind of that that kind of propel you. So it would be whether it be a tour. Or, I just haven't got I never really found that good, you know, partner to do that. But now that the music's in the can and I've worked on it, it's 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 ready to roll. Your second single released last year is Teach Me to Dance, which is just a great song, Taylor. Will you have a new album coming out this year? Yes, I am going to I'm going to be releasing new music. I've got new music in the can. I'm excited about uh getting out and and performing on tour. Obviously, you can go to my my website taylorhicks.com to to really uh to go into the touring schedule which I'm thrilled about. It's nice to be back out on the road, but yeah, new music will be soon. Oh, that's really exciting. I want to take you back to June the 16th, 2023, when you made your debut appearance at the Grand Old Opry. That must have been a bucket list moment for you. It has been. I mean, living in Nashville, in and out of Nashville is, since my early 20s, you always dreamed of of getting the call to perform at the Opry. And that's kind of what has happened this, this go around. I, I was able to get the call and I jumped at the chance. I think it's an honor to be in that circle and to perform. And I don't, I wouldn't, I don't take it for granted. No, it was a really great moment. And another great moment, you were on Broadway and then on the national tour in Greece. Was that a big stretch for you to do musical theater? It was at the time. I, I, I really, you know, that was something that was definitely not in my comfort zone. Stage work, however, was, but musical theater was not, but look, I, you know, that's, what you have to do is you have to to you know you have to 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 never say no if you get an offer you have to take that offer and and i learned and have so much respect for all of the musical theater actors and actresses now that i've experienced that you know every pop star who has appeared on broadway we just had marie osmond on the show and she said the same thing that it it's really it's a great thing to do it gives your career longevity and you have this newfound respect for these Broadway artists that have to do absolutely, the week. absolutely. You had a residency in Las Vegas, first at Bally's in 2012, and then moving to Paris, Las Vegas in 2013. Would you like to do another residency there, Taylor? I think I would, it, within the right confines of, of you know, it making sense. You know, it, it's tough because you can't really travel and do the touring in the, in the, in the country, like you, you know, like you want to, and, you know, you have to really balance that out. But if the right, if the right uh, project came along, I definitely would go back to Vegas. Well, now you're on tour in a show you've called Night Moves in which you pay tribute to Bob Seger. What is it about Bob Seger's music that resonates with you so much? Well, it's just an artist that is in my wheelhouse. I grew up listening and playing Bob Seger. I kind of incorporated some of his songs into my set. 
And then it just made sense for me to kind of graduate as especially if I get ready for this music and this and the and touring, you know, it, it makes sense for me to to play some some stuff that people love from some of their favorite artists. And I think Bob Steger is a really great. He's not touring anymore. I think people kind of long for his music live, uh, maybe just put in a younger body. So the Bob Steger stuff really works well from a live perspective. And then also I play some of my originals and also some songs from Idol. Yeah, that's just a fantastic concept for a show. Now, in 2007, Taylor, you wrote a very poignant and inspirational memoir called Heart Full of Soul, in which you described your very difficult and challenging journey through childhood, trying to make it in the music business. You wrote the book because you wanted to encourage people to not give up on their dreams. Now, that was 17 years ago. Do you have any interest in writing an updated memoir? Yeah, I'm, yeah, at some point. I think I need a couple of more notches in my hat. I mean, look, you know, you can, it, you know, to write an autobiography at 20, 28 is kind of tough. You know, I mean, it's just you haven't really lived. I mean, and now I don't now I can almost double it, you know, so I think once I can double it, I might do that if I've got a couple of more notches in my belt. Oh, you'll get there for sure. I mean, look, in 2008, a woman by the name of Sally Ganshi wrote a book about you called Taylor Hicks, Who's Your Idol? What did you think of that book? I thought it was OK. I mean, you know, I think it was also inspirational and it was uh, it's just something that I uh you know, I, I just look, you, you know, when people write about you, in, especially in this business, whether it's good or bad, all press is good press. But that was definitely good press in a, in a really positive light. So even though you were young, another author felt that your life story was worth telling. So now that you're older, I think for sure you're going to get all the notches in the belt that you want. And I hope you do. Yeah. Uh, an updated version. Now, Taylor, I know you're too humble to mention this, but I want to publicly applaud you for something you did on June the 14th, 2011. You performed at a benefit concert for Alabama Tornado Recovery, and that concert raised $2.2 million for Alabama Tornado Relief Efforts. That was a wonderful and amazing thing that you did, Taylor, and you should be applauded for that. Well, you know, you got to do what you got to do, and you got to do you got to do what you want. You got to, when you feel something instinctively, you got to go after it, you know, and that's been something in my hometown that happens and it happens a lot, unfortunately, around the country. I mean, there's disasters that go on more frequently than we know, you know, and, and especially that one was something that I really, really got behind and really stand behind. And obviously it was the people of Alabama and I just, uh, you know, I jumped at the chance. So how's the restaurant business going? Restaurant business is great. We're, uh, you know, the Saul's barbecue brand is strong. Uh, look, you know, you can't, you can't really pull the wool over Alabamians' eyes when it comes to barbecue and, and, and cooking. And Mike Wilson was our proprietor. He started Saul's and, you know, he, he, he put a great sauce together. He's got some great some great products and some great dishes. And I'm just kind of along for the ride, but, but in a good way. Oh, for sure. I want to tell our viewers that you can learn more about Taylor Hicks, see his concert tour schedule and buy his music and other merchandise by going to his official website at taylorhicks.com. You can also follow him on Facebook, Instagram, and X formerly known as Twitter. Well, Taylor, I know you're incredibly busy on your concert tour, and I really appreciate the time you took to speak with me today. Thank you so much Harvey, for being on our show. Harvey, you're the best. <laughs> Thank you so much. You are the best. Our guest has been music superstar Taylor Hicks. Remember to check his website, taylorhicks.com, to find out when he will be appearing at a concert venue near you. My name is Harvey Brownstone. Thank you to my producer, Steve Silver, my director of programming, Deborah Batsafin, my production assistant, Rosa Puzo, my PR directors, Eileen Shapiro and Jimmy Starr, and my entire team at the XPTV1 network in the UK. Thank you all for joining us. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out all the great interviews on the Harvey Brownstone Interviews YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified when new videos are posted.